So the network for greening the financial system is picking up the baton and saying that central banks should be absolutely involved in this. But Philip, some people might say, well, actually, that's nothing to do with price stability. And it's not necessarily anything to do with the stability of the financial system or banks. Why should central banks get involved in this? Why is the ECB involved along with the Bundesbank and others? So let me be emphatic that it's not a question of an extra mandate, a new mandate. To deliver our core mandate, we absolutely have to be involved. I mean, already, uh, weather shocks are an important source of uh, volatility. So in our job, even the last two years, uh, we do spend time saying, well, you know, uh, the volatility of the economy is in part being driven by, by climate change. And uh, let me mention also, um, climate change is going to, has this pervasive effect. We know uh, some sectors have to expand, the, the carb low carbon sectors. High carbon sectors have to contract. And we also know there has to be big uh, rate of price movements. So the most important of which is carbon price has to go up. And so when you have a, a big movement in relative prices, a big structural change, then in fact it's important uh, to do that in the context of uh, central banks delivering their inflation targets. One reason, classic reason for wanting low but positive inflation is to allow for price changes to happen. And uh, with, with climate change, there's a pretty big uh, structural change uh, happening, and it's very important that that takes place in a, in a way that, that is smooth, and we know in a world where prices tend to be sticky, where adjustment is difficult, it's important that we grease the wheels of that through delivering our inflation targets. So you're essentially saying that what's going on is not just about risk management of financial institutions, it's also by, about looking at the economy and trying to predict inflation and where that's going to develop. So it's about monetary policy too. Absolutely, because I mean, we know that for the transition, there's going to have to be a big adjustment in household spending. For example, many households will have to spend money on retrofitting their homes to be more energy efficient. Uh, many corporations will have to change technology. Um, and even the energy producing sectors, of course, have to move to lower carbon uh, sources of energy. So it, it's, it's everywhere. Every sector will be affected. And so it's, it's kind of routine, it's central, it's mundane, it's day-to-day, -day, it's absolutely right. core to central banking. To what degree are you going to essentially risk weight financial sector assets according to whether they're green or brown or olive, because it's not always clear which one they are, and to what degree should you be proactively trying to change? Yeah. Philip. <laughs> so, I mean, I think at this point we should all have an open mind, and this is why the network is so important. It's very important, by the way, I think, that the ideal is uh, we come up with global answers because I mean, climate change is a global problem and it, it'd be much more effective if we came to it the same analysis. Uh, let me emphasize that um, the ideal, I mean, I think central banks do have a leadership role. Uh, I think you know, we have the resources, we have the staff to lead, take the lead in analytics, mm -hmm. uh, take the lead in uh, leading the intellectual debate. However, I think it's important to also say, I mean, let's say we conclude that certain activities are very brown. Um, the idea is that everyone gets out of those sectors. So, you know, I think it's a little bit, I mean, if we said we're going to uh, have it, so let's say the credit raters remain saying certain activities are still classified as high grade, certain firms are high grade. Um, and let's say the central bank saying, well, we disagree we have a deeper insight into the future of the world and we're going to downgrade certain categories of firms. I'm not so sure that's uh, uh, the best approach. I mean, the better approach is to get the world to take this uh, seriously. So if the world kind of concludes that in fact uh, a certain activity or a certain sector should be downgraded, it's too risky, the, the long-term risk over the relevant horizon is more severe, then everyone should be getting out of that sector. Not, so I, I think it's not a question of framing of us saying we're going to have a different standard. It's to make sure everyone uh, correctly incorporates climate risk into their assessment. But before I ask the this, I guess the real question, I'm going to come back in a moment about mandatory or not. The real question is, do you think the central bank community and regulators are ready to introduce 
different levels of, say, risk weighting or incentives for holding green assets, brown assets, or slightly green and brown assets, what I call the olive assets. And the reality is that many assets today are actually olive. They're kind of brown going a bit greener over time. Are you ready to actually think about actually introducing different risk weighting or actually penalizing banks that hold the brown assets? All the insurance companies, by the way, because the insurance company, Solvency One, is almost as important as Basel in this respect. So I think progress has been made. I mean, I would encourage everyone to look at the taxonomy, the draft taxonomy that the European Union published over the summer. And it, I was impressed. I was actually impressed by the level of granularity, the level of progress, but it still is in progress. I mean, as, as was indicated, I think a, there's a, a lot has been happening in the last two years or so. Um, but I, I do think um, we, we need to do this correctly. Um, so we have to do it right, especially as central banks and regulators. Um, and again, it's not so much what we think. It's, it's really the fact um, if there are significant risks here, uh, everyone should be responding. But let me, and as you indicated, there's many different scenarios here. There are some scenarios where essentially the global response is inadequate and the big problem is how do we deal with a warmer planet? In other scenarios, there's a, we make progress on transition and then you have the stranded assets and other dimensions. And as a central bank, we have to be able to respond to all of those scenarios rather than saying only, only this scenario will we look at. Yeah. I can see your kid come in. Are you going to tell us about the ECB and whether you want to have green sure. QE at the ECB? But <laughs> let me emphasize, I, mean, I think it's important to keep the focus here on, uh, first and foremost, the imperative is the world adopts appropriate climate policies. Because if carbon is priced correctly, it's not the case we have to do anything different. You know, if the carbon price goes up, uh, carbon intensive sectors are going to suffer. And our normal way of assessing risk uh, the normal way uh, we would deal with it in risk management, all of that will just be implemented smoothly. So, uh, I mean, and the IMF work, I've seen uh, some of the new work you've done. Yep. It's also clear there's a hierarchy here, which is ideally the climate policies are mm. correct. Yep. Then you have various financial policies, yes. uh, and then you come to monetary policy. So let me come to monetary yep. policy because uh, I think it's important to say, first of all, if the climate policy is correct, all of this is just bread and butter for central banks to just implement. Uh, with QE, uh, I, w I mean, it's important to say we buy in a kind of a comprehensive way. So yes, we do buy carbon intensive, mm. but as of right now, as you say, the carbon po climate policies are not yet in place. Mm. Many investors are saying, they're, they're not confident, I think, that the world is actually going to mm. deliver the transition. But you're also buying a lot of green bonds. We're a big holder of green bonds. Um, but let me point out is the way to evaluate QE is not what bonds do we hold. It's we've created very accommodative general monetary conditions. Now, for any firm or any industry that wants to invest in uh, green finance, I mean, the ability of green bonds to be issued and sold in a search for yield environment is very conducive. We have, uh, for general reasons, got very easy monetary policy. And so in terms of timing, uh, so I don't really think uh, what we're doing in any way is uh, making it more difficult for green finance to prosper. These conditions are very conducive for green finance to prosper. Uh, and if the world's climate policies move along and carbon intensive assets are correctly priced for social, mm. the social price is correct, then uh, we will, you know, they will not meet our criteria and they will fall out of the portfolio. But the lead has to be with climate policy.